Perfect. Let's do this. What's good, folks? Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we just had the blowing white scrimmage. That was cool. But the real news that rocked your boost this week was Rico Gathers getting cut. Now, some of us are taking the rational standpoint. Like, hey, guys get cut every year. 47 guys get cut every single year. We have a talented team. You know, somebody's bound to get cut that we like. But then there's the other faction the, of, of Rico super fans that want to blame things on coaching staff. They want to, you know, say the front office is racist for whatever reason because, you know, Rico doesn't look like the other three tight ends on the roster or whatnot that's a bit insane but there are plenty of reasons why rico's no longer going to be on this team anymore and that's what we're here to talk about today first of all like i just alluded to earlier is that this is a deep roster now we look at the tight end position we got four of them we only going to carry three that just makes sense. So if we're going to go heavy at DB, heavy at receiver, D-line, O-line, then we're going to have to cut some weight everywhere else. So are you going to use these tight ends and special teams? If you look at Rico Gathers and you got four guys and you're keeping three, his only responsibility is to beat Cody McElroy. His only job is to be better than Cody McElroy. Damn, damn, he couldn't beat out Cody McElroy. It's all good. Rico's going to go go to New England and go to a Pro Bowl or something. That sounds good. How? When he can't beat Cody McElroy. Everybody else developed. Everybody else improved. They got bigger and stronger and faster and learned their playbook better. How come Rico could because we're making excuses for him. And I don't want to just say all bad things about Rico because it's plays like this that can really get a hype train started. You know, this is the the kind of guy that we wanted Rico to be, that 50-50 that, uh, ball guy, that bigger body guy, that snatched the ball out of the air, strong hand dude, you know? Uh, and he had a couple of these plays, and I get it, but it takes a lot more than that to really put this whole thing together. Oh, this play really did it right here. By the way, Kellen Moore throwing the pass. But this play right here really, really put the nipple on the titty when Rico just got up here and caught over this kid. Whoever this guy is, somebody tell me who number 47 is for Arizona. When Rico caught the ball over this dude, man, the Rico hype train was in full effect, man. But uh, he just wasn't consistent enough to pull this whole thing together. That's my biggest point about Rico. If y'all don't take anything away from this whole thing, as a football player, he's inconsistent. That's my whole thing. If he does the good things good a lot, then he'll still be on his team. But he didn't, so he ain't. I talk about this play all the time. This is the infamous Rico wasn't looking play, the one that I always talk about, right? So Rico's going to be running a vertical here. Now, there's a couple ways you can approach this, it, and it all depends on your leverage. Rico's number 80 right here. It depends on your leverage. We could either run the whole vertical and bend it off to the inside, okay? And that's where the quarterback can kind of put it on you, but that's only if you have pressure from the safety here. Putting it inside gives you the leverage, the, the win and the leverage battle. But Rico comes comes off the line of scrimmage and nobody's there so mike white really wants to put this ball on rico in a hurry but rico ain't looking <laughs> rico doesn't look until it's too late we want you to get your head back early don't get your head back once you've got the defender on you you know um but mike white and he ended up throwing the ball anyway and uh it was kind of hot on rico rico wasn't really ready for it but if rico's head was around right now mike white would have thrown it and it would have been a wide open completion uh but that's just a little nuance that he just didn't have and then look this is the wide angle view of it you can actually see mike white throwing the ball even when rico ain't looking because the leverage is there it's wide open he just got to get his head around but uh mike white takes this uh takes this nasty hit to the face <laughs> because my man <laughs> my man rico wasn't looking and he wasn't ready but hey man whatever and then there are times to where you would be watching Rico. He's the left tight end here. And he just wouldn't really come off the ball and hit anybody. He's almost catching this defensive end right here. Now, even if you don't have the best blocking technique in the world, half the battle is just coming off the ball and hitting this guy. Your hands ain't, ain't got to be perfect. If you deliver a blow, you know, the hands will just come naturally or whatever. And, you know, I just didn't see a very tenacious or – aggressive blocker i don't i don't like using the the s word soft i don't like using the the s word but you know rico got some pretty good size on him and this happened a lot to him there'll be times where i would just watch rico and he'll just look lost and confused now granted i don't know the exact play call here but you know he just look it, it looks like he's out of place here 
My cable bill was way too high. I reached out to AffordableSticks.com. They sent me a fire stick, plugged that thing into the HDMI. Now I get unlimited shows, movies, and live TV. I'm a huge sports fan, so I love League Pass, Sunday Ticket, and I get the pay-per-view fights for free. That's something for the whole family. You can buy a fire stick for every TV in the house and still spend less money than you would on cable. That's AffordableSticks.com. There's a link in my description. You should go click it. Cut the cord, man. I just don't think Rico was all in on football. Now, I think you can have interest outside of the sport and still be a great football player. But, you know, just in terms of his competitiveness, his attitude towards the game, him screaming at people on social media. Take a look at him responding to this troll on Instagram. He was like, man, nah, I can care less about you or anyone else. What amazes you don't amaze me. What phases you don't phase me neither. It's a win-win for me regardless whether I start or not. I can't control where I'm at on an already predetermined depth chart shrugs when the opportunity presents itself i'll shine and otherwise i'm collecting dollar sign dollar sign dollar sign now brother rico that don't look good man i hate trolls just as much as the next person but we just can't give this this image or give the optics that uh you don't care whether you start or not there's no competitive nature in that he said it. this is a direct quote from his instagram uh of him not caring whether i start or not or the depth chart being predetermined well it, well most depth charts are predetermined <laughs> it's called uh it's called projecting but it's your job to fight for your spot it's your job to whoop whoever's in front of you and take his job the cat that was in front of you was cody mcelroy i keep saying his name but damn that was your job brother rico you got to beat him and if you can't beat him you stay where you at if you can't beat dalton Schultz, you stay where you at if you want to start beat blake jarwin he couldn't beat any of those guys and it seems like he didn't care if he beat any of those guys he was just stacking up money the NFL suspended my boy for smoking the Wizzy, so he got a couple games out. Now, that doesn't help his case of being on this team. Now, you want to be available when it's time to, you know, show up and compete. Now, if you're super fantastic, like if you D-Law and you got to miss two games, cool. You can afford to miss two games. Rico was not in a position where he could miss two games. And if you really love football and you know you fighting for your spot and you know everything is on the line, Hey, man, let me show y'all something on this article real fast. Look at this. Look at this. Watch this. So this is the article. It was in the Dallas Morning News or whatever. It was talking about uh, just the charge that he was hit with, the uh, possession and paraphernalia or whatever. But this the one thing that kind of got me the most. This the one thing that made my head shake just a little bit. He said, officers on bike control arrested him at 10.50 p.m. August 31st at Central Park in Frisco after finding him with marijuana weighing 0.0. .0 seven eight zero ounces now i'm vach lombardi and i ain't from dallas and i don't really know where central park in frisco is at but i know that they house the players in frisco that's where the star is let's see how far central park is from the star in frisco A seven minute drive slash 20 minute walk. You was in Central Park. I don't even know if that's the real police that got you. The Central Park police got you. How you let the bike police get you? And look, don't get me wrong. A lot of NFL players smoke weed. I think the majority of them do. And they have their ways of not getting caught. Rico Gathers is smoking weed a mile away from the practice facilities. Boy, is that smart. And another excuse that I'm seeing in the Dallas Cowboys Super Rico fan fan base uh, that's circulating around is that the, the Cowboys cut him because of his rap career. Now, I don't necessarily think that's the case because Beasley put out as many bad mixtapes as anybody, but he put that out in the offseason. He wasn't necessarily doing that in the season. Now, Rico, uh, who raps under the alias Rico Velli, uh, dropped the mixtape during his, uh, his season-ending concussion. Now, concussions aren't season-ending, but the team chose to hold him out. I mean, cool. Whatever uh, cowboy Illuminati politics have behind that, cool. But if I'm held out, okay, I'm going to study plays that people say, I, you know, that I have a hard time grasping. I'm going to take a look at this offense that people say I, I have a hard time picking up on the fly. I'm going to do everything I can that's low contact to improve. So when I come back, I'll be a better Rico than I was at first. <laughs> Rico Velli. <laughs> a better Rico than I was at first. And I think if Rico loved football, he would be doing things like that. I just don't think that he did. Now, I never considered Rico to come in and be this Dallas Cowboys savior of the offense. Uh, that's the other dude that came in from Oakland. But 
you know, I think a lot of people, what they really liked about Rico was they saw success stories from other places. They saw these other power forwards turn into successful tight ends. So, you know, we watch a little bit of Baylor film to be like, oh, look, Rico can post people up. He'll be a fantastic tight end. But there's a lot of things that go into football. You got to learn your plays. You got to know what you're doing. You got to have football spirits. You kind of got to love the game enough to improve yourself outside of practice. And, um, you should not be going by the moniker of Rico Velli. Rico Gathers is, is just fine of a name uh, to go by. There are a lot of reasons why Rico got cut. I'm, you know, uh, even Jason Garrett came out in the uh, press conference and said that, that it just wasn't enough experience, that he just didn't improve enough over the handful of years that we had him. And that that's, that speaks volumes, you know. Uh, Blake Jarwin and Dalton Schultz were rookies last year. And, you know, they, they both have taken uh, great leaps into being better football players. I guess you could just see it differently and, and you know, some of these players i hate these online fans that just think they know everything they think they know more than these coaches like these coaches are at practice and they see everything that goes on with these players so get your life together man you don't know more than them hey man like notification bell subscribe and all that i appreciate you doski woski till next time the YouTube Illuminati is taking money away from your favorite content creators, and people often ask the best way to support the channel directly. I tell them that subscribing to my Patreon. Just $1 a month would increase production and the frequency of uploads. Basically, that means more content for you. For less than a bag of almond M&Ms, you can support the channel, call dibs on requests for future videos, and you can have access to Patreon-exclusive material like my throwback film sessions. That's patreon.com slash Lombardi. I appreciate the support. Doski Woski. Salute.